that could have been a much different situation. Uh, as a church, we gathered the last time that we were here and, uh, and had prayer all together. And I hadn't really thought about that until Belva mentioned it. And, you know, sometimes we don't realize the hedge of protection that God brings around us. You know, we, we, God calls us to pray. He says, you know, to bring, cast your cares. He tells us to come before the, before the throne and all of those things. But, you know, when he's saying that, God's a, God's a loving father that cares for his children. And, uh, you know, that Sunday morning, God knew what we were facing as a congregation already. Uh, none of us had a clue at all. Uh, but uh, I look around today, I see the Bainers here, Sister Betty, others that uh, were fighting with this COVID. I can just tell you, I was just highly concerned. <laughs> I, I, it was funny because I was talking about this online. I was like, you know, as a pastor, you got to say concerned. Because if you say, I was scared, hold on, you don't have faith. I'm just going to be real. I was scared. I mean, I, I'm getting messages, and, you know, when a, a third of my congregation is uh, testing positive for a disease that's, you know, for a virus that's killing people, I mean, I don't know how you, uh, I'm just losing my mom this year with it. It was just, uh, just a scary time. So I rejoice this morning. I mean, I, I could breathe, you know. Uh, a week ago, I couldn't even hardly take a breath. I couldn't even hardly speak. And uh, I just, I just want to thank the Lord this morning. I'm glad to be here to get up. I was getting ready for church this morning. I was just like, man, I'm so thankful, you know, because this could be you know, a lot of, a, a much different story. Any one, two, three, four people could have, could have met their demise uh, because of this virus. But out of everybody so far, nobody. Just one person, I think, just Rosemary, had to go to the hospital. She was a little dehydrated, but even she's feeling better. I talked to her, so, man, what a blessing, right? And so we need to give God the praise that he's worthy of. Uh, and I can tell you right now, uh, prayer prayer matters. Prayer makes a difference. Uh, we don't have any idea what things would be like this morning had God not intervened in our situation. I'm thankful for the earthly doctors. I'm thankful for the antibodies. Anybody that had to, got to take those knows the difference that that has made. Uh, I, I thought many times about what if this church had been impacted by the virus like this six months ago? What would it have looked like when there wasn't antibodies, when people hadn't taken uh, the vaccines and all of those things? What would have been impacted? I can't even wrap my head around that. Uh, I can just be thankful that it didn't happen. Then. And we've had plenty of times where it could have happened. Uh, but uh, so I'm, I just I just think, listen, take the time when you pray and give God the praise that He's worthy of for watching over us. I'm very emotional this morning, so you have to forgive me. I'm just uh, I'm just joyful in my spirit because I realize what could have been and what wasn't, and I realize the only dividing factor in that is that I have a risen Savior today that. Uh, that gave me peace in the midst of times of fear and, and uh, anxiety. Uh, and when I felt so helpless at times, I felt helpless when I was getting calls. I was like, look, look, there's nothing else to do for anybody outside of just pray. And so that's, I'm just thankful for that avenue. I'm thankful how God's watched over us. And uh, I guess I probably ought to start preaching if we're going to get out of here one o'clock today uh, for sure but anyway I love you guys uh, and I, I want to say that there was uh, I don't know who all was there the night but uh, when you guys came out and uh, uh, came Carolyn that night excuse me it was much needed might have seemed like a little thing to you but I can tell you I was I was under it spiritually I was I was battling it my spirit so bad and uh, felt kind of isolated and just I just needed it <laughs> so um, sometimes little things like that you might not think is a big deal it ends up being a, a very big deal it made a big difference for me so I just want to thank you for that anyway good to have my family here with me this morning got CJ and 
his girlfriend, uh, Natalie, all the way out from Denver, and uh, Haley and Wyatt, my girls, they're here, Corey, from Kentucky, so I'm very thankful for all of them. Good to see Brother Stephen, his wife, here this morning, uh, and all of you other visitors as well. We've all been gone long enough we can call ourselves visitors this morning, right? But uh, anyway, it's good to see all of you. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, and it, it is indeed a, a Merry Christmas. Thank the Lord for, for a risen Savior. I got a simple message this morning, but it's uh, uh, it was one, uh, you know, sometimes when I sit down to study, I, I toll over a message, to be honest with you, and so I spend time having to, you know, trying to arrive at the place where, I, where I'm sure this is where God wants me to be at, thank you, and uh, this was one that wasn't that way, I, I knew, I knew early what God was going to have me preach today and, and even this morning as I was uh, I was making preparation God was filling my head with thoughts and I've got little notes that I write down as I go uh, so God as always heavily involved in in what was to be preached today so I hope this is a help to you uh, I, I hope it's an encouragement and then I hope it's also maybe an eye opener in some way uh, the first scripture this morning is in Luke uh, chapter 2, verses 10 through uh, 15. Of course, it'll be on the screen if you want to uh, look there. It says, The angel said unto, uh, said unto them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this is the sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was... Uh, the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men in whom he is well pleased. And it came to pass, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see the thing that has come to pass, uh, the which the Lord has made known to us. Now I just want to focus just a little bit on one portion of that scripture right quick, but it says, there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ, Christ the Lord. And when you study that word Christ in, in the Greek, that it's, uh, you, it's, you can take Messiah and Christ, it's almost synonymous with one another, uh, whereas uh, Christ is the, is the Greek word, but it's the, it's the anointed one. You know, and when we think about, you know, the spiritual needs in our world, they're, they're tremendous right now. And they're, they're tremendous on so many levels because uh, there are people that are just completely uh, oblivious to the fact that there's even anything spiritual that's taking place. It's all about the physical. And so there's no thought about the spiritual. Uh, that's either been either through deception or through... Uh, the smorgasbord of all of the other beliefs that are in the world today that have caused people to be distracted and drawn away, or if it's the world, whatever it is, one way or the other, so many people are, are looking to, to, to are, are not looking at, at the one thing that's significant and, and the most important thing uh, in the world and the spiritual needs that, that, that exist. So we, we we're in a fortunate place this morning. I mean, if you're sitting here right now and, and you have a, a sound mind and you have a, 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 an inkling of an understanding of, of, of the need that we have spiritually, I'm going to tell you something. That, that, count your blessings. Because there, there is a slew of people that are under deception. There are a slew of people that, that, that for whatever reason, don't believe. There's a slew of people that that he believed in and, and, and have walked away. There's a slew of people that are just, that are, that are in a lot of different conditions this morning and not one that has a focus or a thought about the fact that there is a creator God. One creator. One creator God that had a, a, a broken creation because of sin and, and sent to this world a Savior, the Savior. Sent an anointed, an, an anointed Savior that you and I could be restored. That our fellowship that was broken because of sin could be restored. We're, this is Christmas. I mean, this is, this is we, we're sitting here today because of, of, of a great love of God. But rejoice in the fact, if you understand that, know that, and have embraced that, that's a great blessing. Because there's a lot of people that have no clue no clue at all as to what 
to what degree their trouble really is. I, I was thinking about it. It's, it was crazy. I, I don't really understand a lot of this stuff with this COVID mess, I'll be honest with you. I don't understand what's going on in our nation when it comes to medicines. Uh, I say I don't understand. I think there's a lot of greed and things that are involved, which prevents uh, some of the good things that should be being passed along to people from being passed along. Uh, this greed has put a chokehold on, on the free flow of, of care for people. It really has. Uh, and, 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 you, and you look at that and you're like, well, how in the world, why in the world would we withhold certain things from people? Why would we why would we withhold, uh, you know, good medicines that, you know, why wouldn't we do the trials? Why wouldn't we do these things? And, and when you look at it, it's mind-boggling. It really is. I, I've sat and thought about it. I'm like, why? Why won't they? Why is it so hard to get certain medicines that they're, that they're, they're saying it is a help? Why is that so difficult? And, again, it comes to the sinful condition. I mean, you can blame it on whatever. You can blame it on politics, uh, you know. Uh, certain medicines people don't want to use because Trump said it was a good thing. Because Trump said it's a good thing, now we it's got to be it's got to be from the evil one since Trump said it, right? It's just, you, you, you got that, uh, and so it, there's just this, this whole mix of stuff, and it's 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 hard to comprehend. Like it, it would seem like a simple thing, right? If you got a remedy, uh, any kind of remedy, if if you think it's a remedy and you really care about people, you ought to get it to them. And and, and I I thought you know. We can see that in the physical right now. Every last one of us in here, if you've had any experience at it whatsoever, all you got to do is try to get certain medicines. You know what I'm talking about. You know how hard it is to try to get those things. And we, we're seeing that on a physical level. But I want you to pay attention to the things that are taking place on a spiritual level. If, 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 if the enemy is working so hard on these physical levels and we see these things, these deceptions that are taking place and the withholding of things that, that we know are effective or helpful, uh, and, and, we, and we can scratch our head and say, why in the world would it be that way? We need to make sure that you're taking a look at the spiritual level and understand why there's such a great deception about those things. Like, we have a remedy. I mean, there's a remedy for the spiritual problems of this world. There is a remedy. A remedy. There is a remedy. It's tried. It's true. It's been field tested. Amen? Amen. There's no doubt, does it work? Yes, it absolutely works. I'm standing here today as a saved child of God, come up out of addiction and all of those things, as a born-again uh, uh, child of God today, only because of that remedy. And I'm not some nutcase. I didn't get it drilled into my head my whole life. You, you can't blame it on the fact that I was just drugged to church every Sunday because I wasn't. You can't blame it on... I, you just, you've just been brainwashed. No, you can't blame it on that. No, you can blame it on a God that showed up when I was on the last of the last that showed up and turned my heart toward Him. And so that I know there's a remedy. And it's not about a wonder if it works. My whole life has been changed because of it. I mean, I would not, I would not be here today. I would be, and there's just no telling. And I've told you a million times, and get ready. Because as long as I'm a pastor here, I'll tell you a million more. God's been good to me. Amen. He's been good to me. But think about this today. Physical, physical remedies and things that are a help to people being withheld because of greed and sin and all of those things. And then I want you to look at what's taking place with the, with the one spiritual remedy that there is in this world. And look at, the, it, it, look at what links it is... Has, has, that the enemy's going to to withhold that remedy from people. Whether it's through deception to cause people to look to other things. Whether it's, whether it's just, just getting people so caught up in, in, in the flowers around you, you know, and all the things that you can get a hold of and take hold of and you know, do what you want to do and those kind of, whether it's, it's caught up in that, whatever it is, the remedy has been pushed to the side and, and, and the sickness has been embraced. And all of the things that are fueling the spiritual sickness are just kept, they're, we keep throwing more kindling on the fire to fuel all of those things. And those scriptures that talk about there'd be a day when what's good would be called bad and what's bad would be called good. And I just want you to take a look around because there's a real difference between light and darkness. And it's not a line that you and I made. It's not one that we 
decided upon. We have a creator God that has said the things on that side of the line, those are wicked and they're evil and that's dark. And God says, listen, on this side of things, this is righteousness and this is good, this is pure and this is holy. It's not, it's not even up for us to decide. And we're living in a society that wants to make those decisions and then lay those decisions out in front of us and say, this is what you've got to walk with. And if you speak against that, then it's hate. If you, if you talk about it in some kind of sense, then you, know, you, you are now evil. Even though you may be speaking as an oracle for the creator of the universe, the very one that made us, amen, we're living in that day where there's a remedy, and that remedy is being pushed to the side. It's being withheld. We've got school systems that are just so messed up in so many ways today, and the remedy that would be such a help is have some prayer with those kids, spend some time putting some word into them. And, and, and it's not just those, those physical actions that we could do, but it's the Spirit of God that would be involved in that situation that would just make such, a, such an The remedy, I mean, we have the remedy. I mean, we have exactly what is needed to take care of. We have families that are just hurting and people that are just broken on the inside, and we, we know this is what you need. I mean, uh, this is, this is, you're hurting, and I want you to know there's a place. That, uh, we can't necessarily remove the storms, but I can, I can point you to the one that will walk you through the storm, that will get you through to the other side. I can point you to the one that will bring that strength. I can point you to the one that if you just get a hold of his shirt tail, I can promise you today he'll make an impact. He'll make a difference. He, he wants to be involved. And it's, it's not about even begging him to get him in, Allie. It's not, I, I'm so thankful that it's not that way, Red. We can just simply, he wants to be involved. He's just looking for us to want him to be involved. He's not standing back withholding his goodness. He's not standing back saying, I'm not going to give it to you because of your brokenness. I'm not going to give it to you because you fouled it up. I'm not going to give it to you because you've been so sinful. He said, whosoever will is what he says. It, it, it's so much different. He's like, there, there, there's a remedy. And he, said, and, and, and he has illuminated that. He, 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 has, he has given a people. He's made a, a church to be a city set on the hill that this world can see that there's a remedy. Church, we, we have got to reflect Jesus Christ. We, we've got to represent Christ because this world needs to see the remedy. And people are going to choose to, to receive it, and they're going to choose to reject it. But that's, that's, not, that's, not our, that's not our call or our responsibility. It's not even what we're held accountable for, but we are held accountable to be the city on the hill. We've been given the remedy. We've been given it. Oh, man, praise God. We've been given a remedy for, for, the, for our brokenness. We've been given a remedy for, 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 for the heartache and the, uh, the trials of this world and even for the, for the opposition, the enemy. We've been given exactly what we stand in need of to be able to, uh, to, to, be able to deal with and, 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 and plow through those things. I mean, it, it's not just getting through. Uh, we're, we're able to... Uh, to, to conquer and to conquer, amen, with Christ our King. So when you read the scriptures that we're, we're given a Savior, we're given an anointed one, and it, it's not a light thing. I, 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 thought I, was, I was praying this morning as I was sitting there at the house. I said, God, you know, I, I, I've read these scriptures a million times, and you hear it you know, at Christmas time, and it's easy to hear stuff and, and just get used to that, you know, where you just you don't stop and and digest a little bit. But I want you to just digest what, what God is, is reminding us of today. We have, just listen, I, I have given you a remedy. And I'm going to tell you that remedy is far-reaching. It goes well beyond just the, the spiritual problems that we have in the world. But a lot of these physical things that we're dealing with right now would also be remedied if people would accept and follow after that spiritual remedy that God has given through Jesus Christ. When you look at the ways of God and when I look at the opposition to those things, I think, man, how foolish can you be to, to wrestle up against one of the most beautiful things, the most beautiful thing that I've ever known in my life, the love of God. There's nothing that I know that is any greater than that. I mean, I can honest to goodness say in my life, I'm be 50 years old in January. It's hard for me to believe. Half a century. 
That's just a weird thing to say. I've been alive for a half a century. That sounds old, doesn't it, to the a degree? Yeah. I hope I live to see 80. I can tell you that right now. It's just a day. But, but you know, I, I just, in, in my life, there has been nothing else. And I've experienced a lot of things in life. And I've, I've been very fortunate to go a lot of places and do a lot of things. And there is nothing, nothing that I've ever come across that, 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 it, that exceeds the love of God. Meaning, you know, it, it's wonderful to go and visit a nice place, you know, but you walk away from that and, and what you have is a memory, you know. But that memory don't do a thing for you when you're laying in the bed with COVID and can't breathe, you know. God's blessed me with a couple of nice vehicles, and I thought, you know, neither one of those vehicles did anything for me. Nothing. Sit in the driveway. I didn't even feel like driving one of those stupid things. What, what good, all of a sudden, does all of this stuff become, you know? You realize this life is so fragile, you know? And God knows that. You know, he says, listen, I, you know, I put you on this earth, and you're just here for a little while. You're like a vapor that appears, and then, and then you're gone. And we don't treat it like that. We, we treat it like we're this strong oak in the middle of the woods that's going to grow to be, you know, that's, that's how we treat life. But it's not that way at all. Matter of fact, it's so fragile. And, and, and just as God says, we're not promised one day to the next. I mean, it, we, we're living this life, and we just don't know from one day to the next. I mean, we're, honest to goodness, that's where we're at. The reality of our situation is, you know, it, it's really dire in a lot of ways. Uh, but God has inserted a remedy in the midst of all of that. You don't have to fear that the fact that I'm here as a vapor. It, all of a sudden, you get purpose in life. And that's what God gave me through Christ. Not only did he save me, but he gave me purpose. Not only did he say, listen, you're worth something to me. And I can tell you, when I got saved, I didn't feel like I was worth anything to anybody. And God gave me value. And I saw that value. He helped me see my own personal value. And then he began to instill in me to be able to see the value in other people, even the people that were in the worst condition ever. The addicted those that are caught up in whatever sinful behavior, God gave me an eye to be, able to, to be able to see the value in a soul. And I'm thankful for that today. And we all should be thankful for that. We should all just continue to, to walk in that purpose. And when we talk about a Savior, we talk about a remedy. Goodness, I mean, we're, we're, in a, a, we're, we're a blessed people. Romans 10, 13 through 15 says this. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, you have heard me preach right along these lines many times, but I love that word in the Bible when God says it shall be. Because there's a place that is absent of, of doubt. There's a place of, of an absent of chance of it being something else. The, the absence of that it's a 50-50 shot that if you call upon the name of the Lord that you should. No, he says very plainly, he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. I'm a part of that crowd today, and I'm very thankful for it. I called upon the name of the Lord in my most despicable state, and I was saved. Amen. I've called upon the name of the Lord many times from that point all the way up till right now. Uh, and God has been there. He has indeed been a present help, a very present help in the time of trouble. Uh, he has indeed been a friend that has stuck closer in a brother when everybody else was gone. He was there. He has been there. He's never, never left my side. There's been times when I've scrambled and like, God, I don't feel you. God, I don't, I don't sense your presence. You ever been there? All right? God, I, I, you know, with all this that's going on, I'd really, it would be nice if I'd just get some goosebumps. That'd be good. Can I have some goosebumps today, Lord? You ever just have one of those days where you just use some good Holy Spirit goosebumps? You know what I'm talking about? You know, there's some times where, you know, there's those times that God, God does that. He allows those, those points in time for our growth and all of those things. Whosoever. How then shall they call upon him who they have not believed? And what a tactic of the enemy to lead people to a place of 
unbelief and to throw doubt and all of those things. Isn't that exactly what's happened? Like even with these medicines with COVID, it's cast doubt. Cast doubt and people quit searching. Cast doubt and people quit thinking about it. Or all of a sudden they jump on the bandwagon. Not only have they cast it doubt, but you got people jumping on the bandwagon, you know, even poking fun. Like if you want to take a certain medicine, they're poking fun at it. Don't go for that. You're, you know, you're stupid if you do that. Or you're this or you're that. Right? I mean, think about it. I mean, it's, it's exactly what takes place. And we're dealing with the same thing on the spiritual realm. It's, it's amazing to me in our day, I mean, just how much. I mean, uh, when I see Christians oftentimes depicted in, in movies, a lot of times they're depicted as, as either ignorant in some kind of fashion or are just completely radical, you know, uh, to the place where, you know, they just, it's just not, it's just not, <laughs> not somebody that you're just like, well, it's, it puts you off. They, they, don't, they don't create the image, you know, of, of a person that was destitute and broken that is restored. They put in this person that is believing something that's foolish and, and so that's presented that way. And it's presented that way over and over again. And so there's a deception that's taking place on the spiritual realm. And they say, so, so how is it? Like, if they don't believe, I mean, God says, whosoever will, but what? But, but if they don't believe, then what? You know, whosoever will. Like, the remedy's here, but if, if, if the shelf is full of the remedy and nobody's buying because of the deception, then, then what? And that's exactly where we're at. God says, listen, here is what you need. And then there's debate. <laughs> and there's you know, arguments. And there's all of the foolishness. And, 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 and pointing to 50 other things. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what he says. He don't even exist. He's not even real. You know, that, that's, that's, where, that's where we're at. And so, ponder upon this today. And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? Again, how? How? And then how shall they hear without a preacher? And I'm going to tell you, it'd be easy to just look at that scripture and, and point your fingers at me when it says preacher. But let me tell you something right now. We are all called to preach the gospel. The Bible tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say preachers. It doesn't say those are just called into the ministry. It says Go into all the world. He's talking to his church. He's talking to the anointed ones. See, God sent a Savior that was anointed for a purpose. And then God saved us and has anointed us for a purpose. We've been set apart to serve God's purpose. And that purpose is to be that city set on a hill. And God says, listen, uh, when, you, when you begin to take a look at, at, at the why, God's why along the way, I mean, I... You have to take the time to study the Word. So many people that I talk to that have doubts and all of these things, I'm like, how much time have you really spent digging in uh, to these things, you know? Uh, it's amazing to me. Sometimes I, I'll talk to people that, uh, uh, that will listen to all of uh, just, uh, just a smorgasbord of mess in the world and will take that in, and because of what they've taken in, they, they throw the Bible to the side. And then one of their arguments is that book was written by men. Back that up for a second, and all the garbage you just listened to came from where? You'll take that in, and because the Bible, you know, I, I could spend, you know, I don't even have the time today to preach everything I want to preach or say what I want to say. But, I mean, whether we, we could deal with prophecy this morning, I mean, there's a there's hundred different places I could go right now from the time that I spent digging. Because I wanted to believe because it was real, not because it was something that somebody just told me. Now, I knew I'd had an experience when I got saved, Peyton. I knew, I knew that I'd had an encounter with something I didn't understand the day that I had an encounter with God. I, I knew that that had taken place. Now, I couldn't explain it. I knew that it was God. I, I knew that only because He impressed that upon me. I knew who I was dealing with. I didn't understand why he approached me in the way that he did, and he didn't just show up in body. Don't misunderstand that. I mean, I, I was impacted spiritually. It changed my whole life. But, but when, I, when, I, when I view that, I, I understand that. And so, so I went digging, digging from that point. And I could, spend, I could spend the rest of today 
talking about all of the reasons that I believe. And it started all with having an encounter that I didn't even look for. Amen. It all started with, with, with having all of the guilt washed from my life in an instant. And I mean, when I, I was, if you could imagine just, just diving into the mud, being covered from head to toe, and then having that mud washed off of you, that's how I felt the day I got saved. That's the only way I know to describe it. I went from feeling like I was trash to I thought I was going to step out the door and start flying. That's how I felt. And I didn't care. I didn't care what people thought about me. I didn't care. I, didn't, I had people showing up at my house, my place. My place was the place they wanted to come and come party. And so when they'd show up at the door and I was like, hey, I just want you to know, I'm not running down those roads. It's just, I, I was a DJ at the time, and I, I knew I had to separate myself from, from all of that to be able to, to discover what it, where it was that I was going. I, had, I knew that, that what I had encountered was, was what was going to be the thing I would be chasing after the rest of my life, and I'm still chasing all the way to this day. And I can tell you right now, not once has he ever been found unworthy to be chased. Not one time has he, has he ever... Has he ever been less than what he said he would be? He hasn't. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've run into some sorry rascals along the way that haven't been what they ought to be. But my God has always been exactly everything that he said he would be. Every piece of word that I've dug into where God has said, if you'll do this, then this is what I'm going to do. I've put him to the test. I've, 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 I've done what he said, and guess what he's done? He's done exactly what he said. And, and so I'd do what he said, and you know what he'd do? He'd do exactly what he said. I can remember early on when I got saved, God said, listen, cast your cares, and I'd cast my cares. God said, listen, I want you to set your affections upon me, and I'd set my affections upon him. He says, pray without ceasing. And I'd talk to him all day long, even when I was at work, wherever I was going. I, I was desperate to know God, desperate desperate to know this one that made me feel loved when everything else had made me feel broken. I was desperate for that. And maybe somebody here today is feeling that desperation. I know what it feels like. Listen, we're, we're all alike when it comes to that. Because there's a void in every last one of us that can only be filled by God. Everything else will just come up lacking, always. I can tell you, I can, I can save you a search I can save you a lot of wasted time right now. You can, you, can, you can spend the rest of your life looking for something else that will fill that void, but I'm going to tell you, you're not going to find it. Because there is a creator. There is a remedy. And people don't want to hear that today. They want to lay it out into a smorgasbord of 25,000 different remedies, and you can, get, you can get to this one creator this direction, that direction, this direction, that direction. I'm just going to tell you that's not how it is. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I'm just going to tell you simply, the God of heaven, the creator of the universe, has said that's not how it is. It'd be like me looking at my boy and saying, hey, listen, that, that, that girl of yours, her name's not Ava, it's Alfred. Could you imagine? He'd look at me and say, you're an idiot. Well, you better not look at me and say I'm an idiot, but anyway. That's my daughter, Ava. You know, we're, we're trying to call a blue sky green oftentimes in this world that we're living in. And everybody's looking at the sky and it's very plainly what it is, but yet we're trying to call it something else. And we're living in a world that's trying to paint a different picture of the remedy than what really exists. And it's thrown people, it's thrown people off. It's thrown people off. And, 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 and the church haven't been what she's been. Listen, I'm going to tell you, take this for what it's worth, because I'm not one to beat up the church, but we... we I'm going to tell you, God spoke some very plain words to his church. And judgment is going to begin with us, guys. And so, so we, we have to be what it is that God's called us to be. And, and the remedy has to be applied. And the remedy isn't just about being saved and being washed clean. It's about throwing some things down and picking some things up along the way. Amen? Just plain and simple. And so we have to take a, take a hard glance at that have to take a hard look at our own lives and realize today that how are people going to believe? Are they going to believe just because you tell them? Is that, is that enough? 
Now see, God didn't do it that way, did he, Brother Randy? God absolutely changes lives. And everybody that knew me when I got saved knew that something had happened. They knew something was different. I went from being one person to being a completely different person. And I'm just going to tell you, anybody that has known me over that period of time can also tell you that I'm not the same person that I was 10 years ago. That, that that impact didn't just happen on day one. That impact, is it's taken, it has impacted me this morning. That remedy, that relationship that I have with Christ Jesus has impacted me on a level that it has changed my parenting. It has, it has changed how I deal with, with hard situations. It's changed how I, I deal with people. Like people that that in, in a world perspective ought to honestly in some ways would be considered my enemy. Instead, God's given me uh, a, a spirit to want to wanna be at peace where possible with those folks. Now, listen, that's not me. You know, I'm the guy that, listen, I'm just going to tell you, this is just who I was, bro, Randy. Uh, you done me wrong, that's it. That's it. It's game on. And I, ain't, I may not do you wrong today, but I will get you back for what you, that's who I was. And if you talk to me out of line, I'm just telling you right now, I was ready to just, I'd flog you. And I didn't care to use some French and other languages along with it when I was doing it. That's who I was. And I can just tell you in, in a growth process, and listen, I, I'm, I'm talking to you about something that's not just everything that I'm talking to you about right now has, has been my experience, but listen, I'm going to tell you, it's an experience that any one person, this whosoever will, whosoever will, all you got to do is come to this remedy, and God says, listen, I'll, I'll make that impact in your life because this is who I am. I created you to be in this image. This is who I made you to be. What you are in this world and what this world is trying to tell you ought to be in all of those things, it's a, bro it's a brokenness. And it doesn't matter how well put together you may think you are or how well put together this world tells you you are, and unless you are a reflection of, of your Creator, unless you are a reflection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, unless you are reflecting that, I'm going to just tell you, you are in a broken situation. It doesn't matter how many people tell you. It's been, I just want to rejoice because I was worried about preaching this morning. And God has given me the ability to preach this morning. I was wondering whether I'd even be able to breathe a few days ago. <laughs> Realizing brokenness. Church, y'all just forgive me. I'm going to preach till I'm done today. We, we have to recognize that we all have a, a great responsibility within these walls and then wherever we go. Because how are they going to believe? They're not going to believe just because we've said something. They're going to believe when they see the impact. They're going to believe when they see Sister Rachel isn't the person that she was before. I knew Rachel. I knew who she was. I know how she lived. And she's not that person. It's, it's obvious that she, she has a remedy. It's obvious that there's been an impact. There's an obvious, and that's exactly what, what, what it takes. And sometimes you run into people that are supposed to be that, supposed to have received that. They even, they even title it. They wear the name tag, all of those things. And yet they don't, uh, when you look at the image, you don't, you don't see the creator. Uh, God, he's saying very plainly, he said, how are people going to believe unless they see it? And so we all have a, a responsibility to, to search out this creator, to search out who he is, to search out his character, to put ourselves into that light, to walk in the light of who he is, to walk in the spirit of it, that it can change us, convert us, shift our lives to the place that we, we are preaching that gospel even when our mouths don't open. See, too often, even within the church world, we're putting a lot of, of, of emphasis on our effort and not into our relationship. And I'm going to tell you right now, God has laid it upon my heart as a pastor, as a preacher, as a child of God, 
that the relationship is the thing that we have to focus on because the relationship is what's going to bring things back into the play. Like I could get you into this church every Sunday for the next year. I could get you here every Sunday. And, and, and that may have some slight impacts here and there. You're going to feel the love of people and all of those things. But, but it, won't, it won't have the impact that the relationship would have. Ever heard that saying, uh, you can't put a, a square peg in a round hole? You ever heard that before? There's a lot of people trying to make their way to an eternal heaven when you got to be a round peg and they're square. And there's only one way to be that round peg. It's just that simple. There's only one way. I mean, there's no other way to be what we're supposed to be that we're able to get past the gates of the place that we want to go. There's no other, no other possibility. And God, has, God sent exactly what we needed in order to be what we need to be in order to make our heaven our home. But we're living in a world that's trying to tell people that that and that and that and that will get you to where you need to be at. And God has said plainly, but that's not the case. I sent, you know, laying there in a the manger when that angel showed up to the shepherds there that day. And he said, listen, I want you to know I'm, I'm bringing some good news here, guys. There's a Savior. There's a Savior. And I'm going to tell you right now, anybody that has been broken and healed, broken and restored, broken and brought back into salvation, understands what it is to have received that. And in that day, I mean, I I just don't even know that we will ever fully embrace the impact of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the impact on this world. Because as dark as things are right now, there is light littered all over this world. You take that light away, and I'm, I don't know what things would look like. But right now, even as dark as things are, there's still glimmers of hope in the midst of all of that. There's still light. There's still people that care. Meaning, like, today there will be people that are going to feed the hungry, and they're going to love them when they do it. Today, there are going to be people that are going to care for people. There are going to be people that are going to embrace people. There are going to be, today, there's going to be forgiveness. Today, somebody is going to be merciful. Today, somebody's going to be gracious. That's all going to happen right now. Right now, people are experiencing those things, and that's because light is here. Because there is a remedy that has impacted. I'm preaching this morning because light made an impact, because the Savior made a difference. You're sitting here this morning, either because either one, because you've been impacted directly, or you're aware of it and you want to be impacted, whatever, whatever the purpose, you've been impacted because of this remedy. God says, listen, I want to, I want to pour into you, and then I want to pour through you. Amen? God spent a lot of time pouring into me before, before He could pour through me. I can tell you, there's a lot of things that had to change. Your brokenness is never, never so broken. As long as you're able to draw a breath, and thank God for drawing a breath this morning. As long as you're able to draw a breath, and you're still, there's opportunity. And I thought I almost named that message that today. Was, that's exactly what Christ has given us, is opportunity. He's given us opportunity to live and walk with Him. I, I love the titles that God's given us. When I think about that sometimes, I'm like, God calls me a king and a priest. My father says I'm a joint heir with this, with this, with this man that walked the earth that did nothing but love people. And, 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 and he's, he was the Savior, the Messiah, and God has said, I loved you to this degree that through all of your brokenness, through all of your mess, through all of that garbage that you did, from all of the places that people threw you away, I'm embracing you. 
And I'm not just loving you and holding you to the side and saying, listen, we'll let the big boys take care of it. He said, no, I'm, I want to bring you in. And this is who you are. You're a joint heir with my son, Jesus Christ. A joint heir. Here's your hope. <laughs> There's your hope. He says, not only, not only are you joint, he says, listen, right now, you, you are kings and priests. Right now, that's who you are. This is your identity. No, you're not an alcoholic. You're not a drug addict. You are a king and a priest. That may have been who you once was, but that's not who I identify you as. You are one of mine. You're a son or a daughter of God today. Saints, rejoice. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High God today because God saw fit to give us a remedy. He saw the brokenness. And he provided a remedy. Amen. And we need to rejoice in that. It's something to praise God for. It's something to shout from the rooftops. And it's something to embrace. Don't get so caught up in living life that you don't live life. Seems like a crazy statement, but that's exactly what happens. We get so caught up in, in those that would gain their life, lose it seek to gain their life, lose it. Those that seek to gain their life, lose it. Those that want to take the reins by their hands to go after life and their level, their ground, their thoughts, their, those people will lose it. This is all there is to it. That's what's going to happen. It's not if, it's not maybe. God says, listen, those that seek to gain their life will lose it. Understand, that's what's going to happen. God says, this is exactly what's going to take place and it has to take place. It has to take place because God doesn't want us to get caught up in this vain world, this empty world, this temporary world. He doesn't want us to get so caught up in it that we lose sight of the fact that we are eternal beings in a temporary body that are going to leave this place and spend eternity with Him. That's His desire. That's the plan. He says, listen, there is a very real enemy. I want you to understand this today that's setting out to steal, kill, and destroy. He's deceiving people to the place to say, listen, I don't want you to pay attention to the remedy. What's the reason for that? I mean, we could sit and devise. It's just like this COVID mess. What's the reason for Why won't they? Why don't they want the remedy out there? I don't know. I can't figure it out. Why is the enemy fighting so hard to keep God's people from having the remedy? I, I can't figure it all out, how, how there's such hatred in a being to be that way. But nonetheless, it's exactly what has taken place. And until we as a church body wake up to it to convey that message to the world and, and do it unapologetically, yes, the preacher just said, unapologetically. Because church, we've spent too much time backing up and apologizing for the message of truth that God has laid out there. And the fact that there is a risen Savior that loves you, that is there with open arms, and he's, and he's looking at that time clock to say, you know what? There's a time that's quickly approaching for this entire world right now. There's a time that's quickly approaching. All the, I mean, for right now, I mean, it's coming as fast as it can possibly come. So listen, you, you, you got to get ready. And if you're sitting here today and you're not ready, I'm just going to tell you, you can be, but you've got to choose to be. I'm not going to spend time talking about a lot of things that I want to spend time talking about. When we think about, let's just look real quickly, a couple of scriptures and I'll close out. I'll be done here in the next 10 minutes. Genesis 3, 14 through 15, Jehovah God said unto the servant, Because thou hast done this, cursed art thou above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon the belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and, and shall, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh, and when you study these scriptures and you discover exactly uh, the things that are taking place, this is a prophecy about the coming Christ. This is a prophecy uh, about Jesus. When you begin to understand the bruising of the heel, uh, the enemy was allowed to attack the body of Christ as far as he was hung on the cross and, and, and he did 
die on the cross, but he rose again in three days. Now, he attacked the heel, the seed of the woman. Uh, we're talking about the church and all of all of people that have come about in the body of Christ along the way. That's God's church. That's God's people. And there is an enmity. These scriptures describe this, uh, this battle uh, that would be taking place, this enemy, this dividing line that's there, uh, that there would be a very real enemy. And all the seed of this enemy uh, would be at, at odds with the seed of, of the church, of the bride, of, of those things. And so God lays this out in Genesis. Now this is Genesis. This is written some 1,500 years before the birth of Christ. This is not long after the fall of man and all of those things. And yet, here God is already fully describing exactly what's going to happen down the road. And so here we sit today and you say, well, why would they withhold truth? Why would they withhold these things? There's your reason. Because God has very clearly said that their enemy, there would be an enmity between the seed of Satan and and the seed of God's church. There's going to be opposition. There's going to be a battle. It's going to be a constant taking place. And we deal with it every single day. You deal with it in your flesh. You deal with it when you're dealing with people. You deal with it in systems in our world today. All of these things exist, and there is, a, uh, there is a, an absolute dividing line between darkness and light. God help us to see those things and understand today. Last scripture. Matthew 23, 27 through 28 says this. He says, What one do you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto white, white sepulchers, which outwardly appear beautiful, but inwardly are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear uh, righteous unto men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. I said it was the last scripture. I got one more after that just because it, it applies. But two things we look at very briefly here when you think about this. God is reminding us here it's not just about your outward actions. It's not just about showing up to church. It's not just about what you call yourself. It's not just talking about what you say you believe. He's saying, listen, you can do all of that. I mean, anybody can clean up a tomb on the outside, but when it gets all said and done, on the inside of that tomb is dead, dead bones. That's it. And he was looking at these scribes and these Pharisees, and he says, listen, that's your condition. You're doing some outward actions that look good. And so you've cleaned up your actions a little bit. He says, but on the inside, inside, Christ is laying out the reality that they needed a remedy. They needed a cleansing. They needed a, 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 a new birth. They needed to receive those things. Romans 1, 18 and 19, and this is the last scriptures, I promise. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. And I just want to remind you, as I would say, for the wrath of God. The wrath of God is God's strange work. We're sitting here in a time of mercy. We're sitting here in grace, and we're embracing and enjoying all of those things because that, that is who God is. He's the God of love. He, 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 is, he is the God that sent the remedy, that wants to save. That, that is the answer. That's what he wants. That's his desire. And, and, he, and, he, and he opens the book and he says, listen, I want you to, I want you to pay attention because this is what's coming. Now, I, I haven't set this time aside for you specifically, but if you don't, if you don't repent and turn away from the, the, from the ways of, of this world, from those things that are taking place around you, if you don't, if you don't throw that to the side and, and make a headlong choice to come to me, I want you to understand there is a wrath that is stored up. And that is coming. He, he doesn't, it, it's no surprises. He said, this, it, I, I'm not going to tell you exactly when it's going to happen, but it's coming. Be ready, it's coming. He said, it's going to take place. And so he says, listen, I have stored, there's this wrath that is stored up. And then he goes beyond that. He says, uh, against, and, and he says, what is like, what it's reserved for? It's not reserved for those that love God. It's not reserved for those that have, 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 have compassion in their heart that have that are setting out to model our Savior Jesus Christ. That we have stumblings and maybe we fail and we're not perfect in, in all of our actions, but our hearts are perfect, perfectly going after God with a wholeness and a pureness and, and a conversion that has taken place. And we are now round pegs chasing a round peg right into heaven. But he says, Listen, I want you to know there's a wrath that's stored up for those. That, that, that are rejecting what's required. For those that are rejecting, they're rejecting who He is. 
It's not just a rejection to say, you know, I really just don't want to go to church. I really don't. He says, listen, this is who I am. And the only way for you to, to, to be this is it, there has to be a new birth. This is the only way it can happen. He says, this is how it is. This is how it happens. This is it. And so there's a rejection of being like him. People choose, I'd rather be like the world. I'd rather embrace these things. I'd rather have the enjoyment of this. I would rather take hold of this. And I'm going, to, I'm, and so there's a rejection. And God says, listen, there's a wrath that's stored up for those that have, making, uh, that have made a conscious choice to reject Him. To reject holiness. To reject good. To not only reject the remedy for their own life, but reject, reject God's desire to supply that remedy to the world. Any one of us that make a choice to reject, to reject the walk. Not just reject coming to church, but reject the walk. You can come to church and still reject the walk. You can call yourself a Christian and still reject the walk. God says there's a wrath that's stored up for those that have made a choice to reject. And he says it very plainly. And, and this is the way to describe it. He says uh, this, this wrath of God is revealed from heaven uh, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And then, he, and then he lays this out. He says, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And he says, listen, when, when you've chose to reject me and you've chose to reject my ways, at the exact same time, you've also made a choice to withhold the remedy. It'd be like me giving CJ the remedy for COVID. And CJ says, I, re I, I, I don't want it. I don't want it. CJ, this will heal you. It will, it, it will completely, completely cure you. And it'll cure everybody that you give it to. And CJ says, I don't, I don't, I don't want it. I want to keep drinking Pepsi. Pepsi will do it for me. I just like Pepsi so much better. It tastes so much better than that remedy that you're trying to give me. So I'm just going to keep drinking Pepsi. And he shares this Pepsi with everybody that he knows. And that's exactly what takes place. Is people embrace unrighteousness. And they share their unrighteousness with everybody they know. And God says, listen, there's a wrath that's stored up for those that have not only rejected my righteousness, but instead they've embraced unrighteousness and they withheld, they've withheld a remedy to every person, there, to their family. They've withheld this remedy. They've withheld, I'm giving you what you need. And by you choosing selfishly to go after the world and after your flesh and after these things, he said, you are withholding from people that I love and care about and I see their brokenness and I, and I want to fix them. I want to heal them. I want to lift them up. I want to put their feet upon the rock. I want to provide for them. I want, I want to put praise on their lips. I want to do all of those things. And I, you, could, you could be that oracle. You could be that ambassador. You could be the king and the priest. You could be a joint heir. Instead, you've rejected it and you're handing out Pepsi or Coke. Instead, you're holding on to the things of the world. I'm closing, Sister Bo. Really, I mean, I really am closing. I ain't just saying it this time. It's not a lie, I promise you this time. It's not a lie. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever. That by itself is, is something to rejoice because if you got loved ones, you know right now, God has provided an opportunity through Jesus Christ. You know right now there's hope. They're still walking the earth. You can, you can pray, pray for their misery. God, make them miserable. Make them miserable. Put them on their knees. If Whatever you got to do, God, to get them to the place where their eyes are open and that there's an understanding of, of what it is that you have given. God, please, please help them to not be deceived. Church, take a look around. I mean, our Bible is coming, is, is alive 
is alive with, with all of these things that God has said would be in this day. And he's made it so plain. He says, listen, even the very elect would be deceived. I, I see those scriptures and I'm like, how could it ever be to the place where people would be, could be so deceived? How could that? And then I'm looking around and I'm like, we're, we're there. We're there. People will believe absolute lies and, and never look never look past never look past the information they'll just embrace it take it in and and there's and, and some of these things are so deceptive and dark and and you scratch your head and you say how 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 can they believe that it's over i see it it's just all over the place so it's so many different things I'm like how in the world and god said listen this is what's going to happen and he says, I'm, this is what's going to happen as well because all of these people that are, that, that there's this wrath of God that's stored up for because they've embraced unrighteousness and they've withheld the truth. He said, those same people, I'm going to turn them over to the very thing that they're chasing after. I'm going to turn them over to a reprobate mind where they ain't even going to have the sense to tell the difference between what's good and what's bad. He said, that's how it's going to be. And he says, listen, when he says this, that even the very elect would be deceived... The only reason the elect would not be deceived has nothing to do with anything that we are, anything that we do. It has nothing to do with what church you go to. It has everything to do with the relationship that you're in with the Father. Very briefly, Jesus sat in the midst of the disciples. They didn't have no understanding. Jesus, it, it's the scripture said very plainly. He said, he, I op he opened their understanding. In the midst, they went from not understanding to understanding. And God showed that there's a switch that he can throw very quickly. Your understanding isn't something that you've developed because of your intellect. Your intellect, your understanding is there because of the relationship you have with Jesus Christ. Never, don't, don't boast in your own understanding. Boast in the fact that you have a relationship with the one that has opened your understanding. Amen. And those that are deceived could very easily be brought back into the light. Just, just given a glimpse along the way. I mean, you look at Paul on the road to Damascus. He was in darkness and he was under deception and he had a belief and he was chasing after his belief in a passionate way and people were dying because of it and God flipped a light switch on the road to Damascus and changed Paul's life and we've all been impacted by that. God wants to throw the switch in some people's lives. And I'm going to tell you something. You can be the switch thrower. You can choose to embrace this world and embrace unrighteousness and withhold the truth, or you can choose to walk in the light of what God has given you, and you can make an impact on somebody that is caught up in deception, that is in darkness, and the light can be turned on. Amen. Sister Bevel, let's have a song. Have you, have, you, have you received not only the truth for yourself, but have you made application of that truth to the place where you understand who you are as a servant and a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ought to be a city set on the hill. This world needs to see Jesus, church. They need to see the real Jesus. Amen. That's what the world needs to see. They need to see the real Jesus. They don't need to just hear about him. They need to see him. And listen, the only way that they're going to see him is if we allow him to convert us, if we allow him to change us, if we allow him to continue to change us more and more into the image of Jesus Christ, if we allow that as we walk in this spiritual journey and follow the guidelines that God has given about this spiritual journey, about... Uh, being in prayer and about staying in the word and about not forsaking our gathering together and about setting our affection on things above, about putting out of our mind those things of darkness, about adding to our faith all of these things that God has said. When we set out to walk in it, we're going to reveal Christ because there is going to be a, a, a well within us that is bubbling up and overflowing that will reveal to this world around you. You can, you can make that decision or you can cap off the well. And you say, you know, I'm going to stick to where I'm at. I'm going to stick to what I'm doing. And I reject what you're saying. It's a choice. What will you choose today? Now, I know there's people that are watching from at home, online. And I just want to speak to you right where you're at and just let you know there's a God in heaven that absolutely loves you. And there is a, a risen Savior that's sitting on the right-hand side. We all have an advocate today, church, that's sitting on the right-hand side of the Father. He came, he lived, lived the perfect life, and he died, 
And then he rose again. And he is alive and well on the right-hand side of the Father. And he is there with open arms today for every broken one of us, for every lost, desperate soul, for every person that is in need of a spiritual remedy in this world. He is there with open arms and says, whosoever will. You can make a choice today. No matter how far away that you've gone, it doesn't matter how all of the things that you may have done up to this point makes no difference whatsoever. I'm just going to tell you something right now. God is there. He loves you and has a desire. And church, you listen to me. You chase after God. You chase after Him with everything in you. You pour into that. You can invest into that relationship, and I can promise you right now, God will use you. He'll use you. And He'll impact lives of people that are right all around you Listen, embrace that. Take hold of that. And allow God to do the work that He wants to do. Go ahead, sister. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. you tell me more about his lovely name. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Holy Spirit, won't you tell His lovely name. God, you didn't have to send him to die upon that cruel tree. But I'm thankful that you did it. And I know it was for me. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus.